insert the front inserts into the front of our bag. For view A, where the insert is larger than the seam, um, we want to gather uh, this edge um, into the correct seam length so that it will fit into the seam. So what I've done is gone ahead and stitched two gathering lines. Um, because we have a half inch seam allowance, I've stitched on either side of that seam allowance. So I have a line of uh, stitching at 3 eighths of an inch and a line of stitching at 5 eighths of an inch. And I've just gone ahead and stitched um, using the longest seam allowance, or the longest stitch length that I have on my machine, which on my machine is a six. Um, so the reason that I do two, often you'll see any, um, instructions that just have you do one line of stitching, and the reason I do two, um, I think is that you get, um, it's easier to distribute the gathers so that you don't have any pleats and you have a nice even distribution of gathers. Then when we're done stitching it in, we're gonna pull um, the stitches out from this 5 8 inch seam will remove um, that line of stitching so that it's not visible on the finished side of the fabric. So the way that I like to do this is we have our snips um, that we made marking our notches and I'm gonna go ahead and match that center um, with the fabric right sides together and then match the fabric on either end with right sides together. And then go ahead and gather the stitching um, using these um, using these gathering stitches. So I'm just going to grab the top threads from each of these and use those, pull on those, to put enough gathers into this seam to make it fit the length of the, um, the seam line. And one thing that you might find helpful or easy to do is to gather it a little more than you need to, um, and then you can kind of distribute those gathers, um, and then as you pin it in, let, um, let it relax a little bit to fit but it looks like I've done a pretty good job. You want, um, again, you want those gathers distributed pretty evenly. Um, it will, on uh, softer, lighter weight fabrics, it's gonna be easier to uh, distribute gathers without ending up with any pleats in your fabric. Remember, I interfaced this medium weight denim so this is actually pretty thick fabric to work with and I you know so I'm, I need to be careful about that distribution um, also you don't want any gathers in the 5 eighths of an inch um, of the very edge because that's going to be the seam allowance for when we sew the front to the sides of the bag and we don't want to have any gathers in that part so it looks like I've got um, got the gathers pretty well distributed, and I can go ahead and insert several pins um, in along here to keep everything in the right place. Um, then I can go ahead and repeat that same gathering and distribution of those gathers on the other half of the insert, um, and then repeat it again to put the second insert in. For view A, or sorry, view B, where we are not going to be gathering our fabric, um, I will take the inset and I have um, what I want to do is match the notches for the you know again just like we did this part is 
easier than view A and very similar, matching those center notches, going to match the seam at either end. And then we don't have to do any just distribution of gathers or any gathering, can just go ahead and pin this seam all the way around. Um, I find it easiest to um, kind of grab, stretch to make them fit, um, and sort of start kind of, you know, in the middle, put a pin, and then feel with my hands, but that's lining up. Stick a pin. There we go. So you can see it looks like we're easing this seam in to this seam, but that's not actually the case. Um, what it is is just that they are matching at the seam lines at the 5 8 inch mark, but because this piece is con uh, <laughs> convex, while this piece is concave, um, it appears that there is more fabric um, in this piece, and there is more fabric um, within the seam allowance, but at the 5 8 inch mark, um, they match up perfectly. So you can go ahead and pin the other side of this inset, and then go ahead and pin the other inset in, and then we're ready to go sew in the insets. So I've gone ahead and sewn the pocket seam, so, or the inset seam, so the um, inset is all attached. And now on view A, we can remove the line of gathering stitches that we put in there. Um, you can go ahead and rip them out however is easiest for you. I like to you know, rip out a couple stitches along the way, but since this is such um, a very long stitch length, it's pretty easy to pull the stitches out. Um, so after making just a few, a few little snips, I can pull it all the way and now get those extra threads out of the way. And what we want to do now, after we get these extra threads, do do do. There we go. All right, so we've got those out of the way. Um, now we want to go to the back of the seam and we want to snip into the seam to relax this seam. Um, and we're gonna go sort of every, you know, every inch or so along the length of the curve. And that will help the seam relax so that we can um, press it's easier to see from the side. Press the seam to um, the outside direction or towards the center of the pocket. Um, so you can see from this side, having those snips lets this um, relax um, all the way. You don't want to, it's okay to snip through your gathering stitches. We don't care about those anymore. You don't want to snip into the seam you just sewed, um, but that will let us um, press that seam allowance um, to the seam allowance is toward the body of the bag. Then we can go ahead and get our iron and we can press and with view A where there's all these gathers you don't actually want to press the gathers but you can come right up to the edge of the um, of this seam and press right along the edge, again without going into the actual gathered part, um, press along there and that will help to press the seam towards the main part of the bag. So I'm going to repeat that for the other, um, the other inset so that then we can go and 
top stitch this seam in place. With view A, it's almost the exact same thing. Sorry, view B, <laughs> it's almost the exact same thing as view A. Um, again, from the inside, we wanna go along and make some snips so that this seam will relax. If you find that it's still not relaxing even after you've put in snips, you can go ahead, go ahead and put in larger snips. Um, sorry, snips that are closer together, so more snips around. Um, if you know every inch or so isn't enough to to relax that. And then actually, from for the um, view. B here, where our inset isn't gathered at all, we can go ahead and use the iron and actually press um, press the fabric, again, pressing the seam allowance towards the center of the body, but we can go ahead and not worry about pressing the inset itself. It's okay to press this inset flat um, the whole way. So go ahead and get that all pressed. Um, and now view, repeat, we'll repeat that on the other inset, and view A is now ready to take to the machine and top stitch. So now that I have the inset panels sewn and pressed with the um, seam allowance pressed toward the center of the bag, I'm going to go ahead and run a line of top stitching. And this top stitching is gonna keep this seam allowance in place so that um, the insets stay um, with the seam nice and crisp and you don't have the bulk of this seam allowance um, flopping around. So I have chosen to use a thread that matches my fabric really closely so that it won't really be visible. Um, you can pick a contrasting thread or even a top stitching thread uh, if you want it to be really visible, that's one fun way to do it. And I am running this seam along um, using, uh, you know, it's about uh, an eighth of an inch. Um, you can also edge stitch, which would be, you know, closer to a sixteenth of an inch. Or really, you know, sew it, if you want it to be bold and visible, sew it at a quarter inch. Um, you know, just anything less than the half inch distance of the seam allowance that we're pressing to the side. Um, it's really up to you of what look you're going for. So I have that stitched in and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other side in the same manner. And I'm showing you, oops, my needle has come unthreaded. So I'm um, showing you this stitching on view B, um, but it's the exact same thing for view A. There's no difference in between them at this step. And one thing that you can do as you are stitching um, is I'm feeling with my fingers um, as it's going, I can feel um, that I have the seam allowance successfully pressed to um, successfully pressed to the center of the bag. And um, you know, if you're more comfortable, you can actually put your hands in there and um, hold it so that you can feel with your thumb feel it as it as it goes along. Um, you know, if you are working with fabric that takes a nice press like this denim or if you're using a canvas, um, you don't have to worry too much about it sliding out of the way um, as you go. Um, but if your fabric doesn't take a press very well, then um, you know, one trick is to just use the sensation on your fingers to make sure that it feels like it should as it is threading past. So now I have gone ahead and done the top stitching with view B, and like I said, it's the exact same thing um, for top stitching on view A. Um, after we have done this top stitching, um, we can go ahead and actually grade the seam a bit um, if there's a lot of bulk there. And grading the seam, um, 
just means that we can go in and trim the seam allowance down. And I'm going to trim just the seam allowance for the, um, that actually came from the pocket, or the inset. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a pocket. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, I'm gonna trim that down because what this does, um, if I'm not trimming the seam allowance side that was from the main pocket body, um, you can see as I'm going through and, and trimming, now the end of the seam allowance, um, one half of the seam allowance does not end at the same place as the other half of the seam allowance. So from the right side of the uh, bag, there is a much smoother transition here. It's not such a sharp line. If you look here where I didn't trim, um, this is a, a lot of bulk that stops all right on one point where both seam allowances end, and it can be you know, pretty visible, but on this end, we're down to, um, it's a nice sort of gradient um, in the two seam allowances stopping at a different point, and this makes uh, the seam allowance much less visible from the right side. So, um, you see when I go through and grade those, grade those seam allowances, and then your front panels, um, your front insets are totally complete, and we can move on with sewing the bulk of the body.